You probably know who Stephen Weigesback is, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. We'll start at the other end with Mr. Randall. And he said a while back, and this is a big picture thing, but you eat an elephant a bite at a time, right? And he said a while back that Louisiana's biggest problem as far as attracting business and industry, he says, Louisiana as a whole, he said, we can't pass the one, two, threes, ABCs, whatever, of employment, read, write, and pass a drug test. What can one little state representative from District 1 do to change in the big picture? What can you do to help? Well, I think it all starts with education. I think it's, that's where we're failing our kids. Is I think we need to start them earlier, make sure every kid has the opportunity for pre-K and start them at an early age and also offer other services as they grow up that will help them to uh, enrich their lives and also teach them certain things to keep them out of trouble, which is also keep, you know, making sure they have a job when they get out of school. And that's one of the problems we have. We had a new industry come over here in Bossier Parish that basically they had a uh, job fair. They had 60 applicants. They told them as they showed up that they uh, would drug test. 40 of them left. And out of the 20 that was left, don't, they could only hire five. So that's what we're dealing with in this area. That's not going to recruit businesses in here that are looking for a good, strong, skilled labor force. Mr. Danny? Yeah, I think this is more of a breakdown of the, the, the home. I think uh, fatherless homes, early pregnancy, those things are some of the biggest issues. Uh, I've been working with a lot of people in our community, in the poor part of our community, to try to intercede in, in a lot of these uh, young people's lives and give them mentors, give them tutors, and we're doing, they're doing all this with volunteerism. They're doing it with donations. I think we try to, we, uh, you know, we try to ask government to solve too many uh, of our problems. I think this is something that should be addressed by the churches about a large part in our communities. And, uh, and I think it's a breakdown of the moral character in the family, fatherless homes. And I don't think that's a government problem to solve. I think that's a community problem to solve. James, what you thinking? Well, I, I agree to some part with both our answers. Education is key. As I said, uh, the prosperity of our state depends on education, employment, and health. Uh, we have to educate because the other two things fall in alignment with that. I received my doctorate in uh, nursing at Northwestern State University for my fourth and terminal degree. I have a son who's a paramedic and a son who's in med school. So education in my family has been paramount. Uh, I'm a, um, a father of two and been married for 29 years prior to Desert Storm. Uh, family is, is key. If we don't hold people and and families liable, then we have to seek government help. And I don't think that's the answer. The more government we have to solve our problems, the less involved we are. And quite frankly, that's what's wrong with our democracy is we have pushed so many people away from feeling like they can make a difference. I want to show them what one of 105 can do. And if I inspire the 41,000 in my district to increase their register of voters, create an app where they can tell me how my constituents would vote in the majority every time I vote, who am I to vote against that? I think we need more people involved. We need to hold people accountable and move forward as a, as a, as a population. Danny, we'll start with you on this. Would you support a constitutional convention? Why or why not? We're talking about a Louisiana Constitutional you Convention? Bet. I would, not a U.S. Constitutional Convention. <laughs> I've already been attacked by that, but yes, I would support a Louisiana Constitutional Convention. Randall? Yes, I would. James? I, I would, uh, and often said that Louisiana Constitution is larger than the U.S. Constitution. I think like the tax code, we have tried to create a document that no one can understand, but we have to be careful because when you promulgate rules and open up a Constitution, there are going to be a lot of hands in there digging, and we've got to be careful with what we change. You got time for one more? You got one more down there? We got about 45 seconds to a minute. We can go quick. Let's give you each 30 seconds to tell us about yourself. Start here with Randall. Well, I'm a small business owner. Started my business back in uh, 1998 with a small business loan. I know what it's like to struggle, work hard, but I've also built a great business there. I, I deal with, you know, uh, Fortune 500 companies each and every day, and uh, I've built a, a great relationship with the community. I, I believe in service. I served in the military. I also serve uh, my community on the Economic and Zoning Committee for the town of Blanchard, and I believe in service. I think we need more people being involved. Danny? I'm a lifelong resident of this district. Uh, me and my wife went to the education system here. My son and daughter did. Uh, my grandkids are in Cattle Parish schools. Um, I'm, that's one reason I'm concerned about the school buses. Um, I've uh, been a small business owner my whole life, put my first oil and gas uh, deal together when I was 23, been active in my church, active in my community. I just didn't start giving donations to the football team. I've been giving them to them my whole life. So I guess you just say the, the, the people of the district one are my people, and I love them, and I care about them, and, and I look forward to, to representing them in Baton Rouge. James? Uh, I'm an advocate. Uh, you can ask 
anybody who knows me, I stand up for what's right. It's not for what I believe. It's for what the majority believes. Uh, I, I don't believe in electing someone to go think for me in Baton Rouge. I, as moving from a direct to a representative democracy, that's one who consults their constituents before they make a vote. Uh, oftentimes, and I'm living it now, when I knock on a door, I tell everyone, this won't be the last time you see me if I'm elected because I'm, I'm tired of uh, people running. They knock on my door. They ask for my support. They get elected, and I never hear from them again. I want to create an atmosphere where the constituents of District 1 are the driving force of change, not one person. And when we look at equality, the seat I sit in is no more than the seat that you sit in. I just get to cast that majority vote.